So in this video, we turn a regular electric fly swat into a 17,000 volt fly swat. Ouch. So this is going to be what I call a Frankenstein project. It's not designed to be particularly aesthetically pleasing or well thought out. It's designed to get back to the basics and just have a bit of fun with a simple electronics project. Now, we will be playing around with high voltage and I have seen many, many people uh, play pranks and zap people with these, which admittedly my five-year-old self does find very entertaining, but I don't endorse it and don't recommend it. And when we modify this to even higher voltages, I really don't recommend it. As, as always, when we're dealing with high voltages, safety and care should be taken. So, let's start pulling this fly swat apart, and also have a look at some of the parts we may need. So, I've bought this high voltage transformer off eBay. Um, I tested it in a previous video, and it measured approximately 17,000 volts. If you want to check out that video, be a link over in the video's corner here. Um, we've also got our electric fly swatter course, rather low voltage to say the least, not very impressive. An 18650 battery, of course this puts out 3.7 volts, and I've got a couple of 18650 battery clips. The reason I've got two is if I don't get the desired effect with one 18650, what the heck, let's put a second one on there for giggles. So, this is going to be a project where it's kind of ad-libbed. Um, not exactly sure how everything is going to come together at the end of the video at this point, but we're going to have some fun doing it. I'll make sure our SWAT is fully discharged by shorting out the contacts. Alright, so not much in here to be honest. Pull that out. So that is everything that makes this fly swat tick. Now we're going to put that aside for the moment because now we have to focus on how we go about installing everything in here. I'm hoping that, okay, we're going to have to cut some of these tabs out in order to get that cover to fit on the transformer. So I will do that and come back when that's done. So I just used a Dremel tool to cut away the uh, posts there and now the transformer does indeed fit into the housing when I line it up properly. And while I was at it, I enlarged uh, the factory switch hole to accept this momentary switch because uh, unfortunately the switch it came with is mounted on the PCB board and we're not going to be able to use that. So that pops in there, and now we've got a switch again. Now, unfortunately, we can't use two double A's, as there isn't enough voltage. I have tried this transformer running off three volts, and it does absolutely nothing. 3.7 is the magical number, or higher, actually. So, obviously we can't fit our 18650 in the factory battery location, and we're going to have to use these uh, clips anyway. So I'm going to propose that with the switch installed, I'm going to hold it and figure out where I can place these on the outside of the handle in a, in a location which doesn't interfere with my hand. And there looks pretty good. So I think it's time to break out some hot glue. Now aside from the hot glue, I'm going to put a small screw, small computer screw, it's very small, I've lost it, here it is, <laughs> um, through the uh, housing as well. It's not really needed, but uh, hey, it's there, why not? So, now we can wire this up to our switch, and I'll just get my soldering iron out. So, I've just drilled a hole just next to the uh, battery mount and fed the wires through and kept them in place with a little bit of hot glue. Now it's time to start making connections. I'm just going to tin the switch terminals. Okay, 
Now I'm going to solder the positive wire from our battery clip onto one of the terminals of the switch. And the other terminal switch of course to our transformer. Got a small piece of heat shrink here which I'm going to slip over the negative wire. I'm going to solder the two negative wires together. And now it's time for some more hot glue. We're going to solder in our transformer and our, uh, sorry not solder in, I meant hot glue in. Hot glue our switch and transformer. Now I don't really think it's a good idea to use the factory wiring here. One wire is insulated, it's probably insulated to 600 volts and the other is just bare wire. So gone around the edge with a small screwdriver and I've popped the two covers apart so that we can see um, the, the joins and make some new connections here. Now don't throw this away, it is actually useful. We could use that in a future project. Um, I got in mind perhaps making a gas lighter or um, or barbecue igniter, something like handheld that it has a good spark on it and that could be just the tool for the job. So looks like we're going to have to extend the wires because they're not going to be long enough from the transformer. So I'll go get some wire. Now looking at this mesh I think it is aluminium mesh. Now unless you've got some uh, specialized flux and solder you are not going to be soldering to alloy. So to combat this, I'm just stripped about uh, 15 millimeters of wire and I'm going to thread it through one of the loops and then twist it so that it um, gets a good firm connection or as good as you can without directly soldering to the alloy. And I'm going to apply a bit of solder to the wire so that that twist can't come undone easily. So now we can install everything back together. Alright, so with a bit of argument, the bat is back together. <coughs> so now we can hook up our output transformer. I've just heat shrunk and soldered those connections. So now I've got the tricky job of trying to fit this all back inside. Uh oh, I might have made an oops. I didn't realise the bat actually recesses into uh, where I've put this transformer. So I'm going to have to snap that out and then re-hot glue it down a bit further into the enclosure. Learn from my mistakes, don't make them. So here's how we do it properly. First we install the bat, we place a whole dollop of hot glue down there, and then we install the transformer. So then nothing is in the way. Brilliant! So I'm going to try and tuck all the wires out of the way for the, uh, the enclosure to be secured down. Hopefully a little something like that. Let's see if it all comes together. Wow! The button's pretty scary if I'm honest. I think I'm going to put some hot glue on that. Yeah, that looks at least 5% better. Right, so while everything's good, I'm going to install some screws. So 
And just for the sake of aesthetics, because clearly we're going for a thing of beauty here, I'll install the battery cover again. So, rather nervous that I'm going to get uh, fried to smithereens, but let's install our battery. See if it works. Oh my goodness. That's effective. So I went and found a dead fly in the house to simulate what happens when you capture a fly and maliciously hold down the button for too long. So here we go. Well, you wouldn't normally get smoke come from your barbecued fly. Oh boy, that stinks. Oh heck no, I'm out of here. Screw that. Man, I am not kidding. That stuff absolutely reeks. Don't maliciously hold down the button for long until your fly is barbecued. It would be my recommendation, unless you want to completely bomb out your house. I've got to knock out the charcoal bits from the fly leftovers actually smoke staining on the mesh now. So, if you enjoyed this rather silly and pointless project, but it is admittedly very fun, do hit that like button, and also while you're down there, if you could subscribe, that would be much appreciated. I'm sure you'll find a lot of future videos entertaining. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one. Bye for now.